Good morning and welcome to the LISA project online workshop on lithium-based batteries. I'm Adam Dickin, the project manager of LISA, and today I'll be your host. We have seven great speakers today from both industrial and more academic backgrounds. And I'm pleased to say that we have over 350 people registered for today with attendees from all over the world, really showing how this is a global conversation. Due to the high volume of attendees today, I'd like to ask all attendees with any questions to use the Q&A tab that's located at the right hand side of the screen, which you might have to exit full screen mode to access. Following our first group of speakers, we'll hold a 10 minute Q&A session where we'll try to answer any questions that you have. With our first set of speakers today, we'll gain an understanding of the solid state battery state of the art and some of the contexts in which the rest of the presentations will be based upon. We'll also showcase some of the most innovative European projects out there. Then following that, our second set of speakers, we have industrial leaders, where we'll get an insight into key industrial developments and how we'll be going beyond the lab bench and into real life. Now, I'm delighted to introduce our first speaker, Dr. Fleur Thysandia. She's a patent analyst from Nomade with a focus in material chemistry and energy storage. She has practical experience in the R&D field of uh, the battery industry and hopefully our presentation today will help us gain an understanding of the bigger picture and also the benefits that proper patent analysis can bring. Good morning. Thank you for the introduction. Today, I will uh, explain you how patent uh, analysis can empower your understanding of competitive and technology landscape with the example of a solid state lithium ion battery. Before to start, just one page to introduce my company and our activities. Nomad is a consulting company specialized in the analysis of patent and scientific information. Our aim is to turn patents and scientific information into business intelligence tools to help companies and R&D lab in their strategic decision. Patent analysis is a complementary approach to market studies uh, to fully understand uh, competitive and technology landscape and find out opportunities and threats in terms of technology and patents. We provide off-the-self reports like patent landscape and patent monitors and customized studies to meet your business needs like prior search, freedom to operate analysis, patent landscape and IP due diligence. Our added value comes from our strong technical expertise and IP knowledge, notably we have a solid expertise in batteries from materials to battery cells, pack and system. As you know, solid state batteries uh, are batteries with the same chemistry than liquid and gel batteries, but with all components in a solid state. There are several kinds of solid electrolytes, inorganic polymers and inorganic polymers composites. Solid Solid state batteries have been developed to enhance battery safety because they are not flammable, they are no leakage, no thermal runaway, and they restrict tundrate formation and enable the use of lithium metals so that the energy density can be improved. All the results shown in this presentation are extracted from our technology and patent landscape reports and monitors. Solid state uh, batteries can be classified in two categories, thin film solid batteries and large scale solid batteries. Thin film technology approach proven for thin film batteries are not directly applicable for large scale solid state batteries. Thus, new process and materials have been, to, have been developed to get large scale solid uh, batteries reaching market re requirements perform in terms of performance, stability and cost. This presentation will focus on large-scale solid-state batteries with inorganic and inorganic polymers electrolytes. 
patents related to polymers electrolyte and other battery technology such as lithium sulfur, lithium air, or sodium ions are excluded. Patents are selected, selected for this analysis are related to the world supply chain, electrolyte materials, electrodes, and battery cells. The first part of the presentation will, re will reveal the main IP dynamics and IP players, and then a second part will focus on solid electrolyte materials. Uh, until March uh, 21, more than 7,300 patent families, uh, meaning inventions, related to inorganic-based listed batteries have been published, including 4, 000, about 4,000 uh, granted patents and 6,000 pending patent applications. The first patent application related to inorganic solid-state batteries were published in the 17th. The level of activity really took off in 2008 and accelerated significantly from 2017, driven by the booming market of electrical vehicles. Until uh, 2004, patents were mainly filled by Japanese battery manufacturers, major co Korean battery manufacturers, LG Chem and Samsung, started to fill patents on solid-state batteries in 2004-2005. At the same period, Japanese material manufacturer Hidemitsu Kosan started its patenting activity on inorganic solid electrolytes. In 2009, several key Japanese R&D labs uh, and ceramic manufacturers and ceramic manufacturers and car manufacturers enter the patent landscape. Since 2014, electronic component manufacturers, Tedeka, Furukawa, and Bosch, started to build their patent portfolio on solid-state batteries, attracted by the promising market of opportunities. Nowadays, numerous electric car manufacturers, Porsche, BMW, Volkswagen, SF Motors, and Chinese R&D lab and companies entered the patent landscape. More than 1,000 organizations have filled patents related to inorganic uh, solid-state batteries. About 40% of, of them only have one patent. The top 10 and top 5 of patent applicants hold about 40, respectively 40 and 30 percent of the patent families. Main patent assignees are many industrial companies confirming their strong interest for this trendy technology. Numerous ceramic manufacturers, OARA, NGK, Kyocera, Scott, and electronic component manufacturers are present in the patent landscape. These companies orient their strategy towards the emerging and promising market of solid-state electrolyte and solid-state batteries because they have the knowledge, know-how, and facilities to manufacture respectively ceramic materials and ceramic components. Toyota dominates the patent landscape. The patent landscape is still quantitatively dominated by Japanese companies from the world supply chain and R&D labs. There are also numerous Chinese IP players and the two major Korean battery manufacturers, LG Chem and Samsung. There are only few European and American companies among main IP players, Bosch, Global Graphene, and Cantonscape. Until 2017, patents were mainly filled in Japan. Since then, China has become the most important territory of interest for patent applicants involved in inorganic-based with state batteries. Patenting activity in China is very thriving, not only due to the entry in the patent landscape of numerous Chinese companies and R&D labs, but also due to high patenting activity of foreign companies. Patenting activity is also increasing in Japan, US, Korea, and Europe. In Japan, the strong increase of patenting activity can be linked to the decision of the Japanese government in 2018 to launch a public-private 
project unsolicited batteries gathering 23 organizations in order to keep Japan dominating position in front of pushing South Korean and Chinese companies. Most of granted patents are covering Japan, China, and the US. Most of pending patent applications are filled in China and Japan. And we can notice that main granted patents and pending patent application holders are uh, Asian companies for all the filling countries. Patenting activity on inorganic solid electrolytes has taken off driven the, by the need of inorganic solid electrolytes be, with better performances. The patenting activity on inorganic polymer solid electrolytes has also increased driven by the development of large-scale industrial processes and the need of more processable materials with good ionic conductivities. Until 2015, patenting activity on both oxide and sulfide solid electrolytes were similar. Since 2018, patenting activity on oxide solid electrolytes has strongly increased due to high patenting activity on garnet materials. Several new categories of solid electrolytes have emerged recently, hydride, oxysulfide, and allyde. Companies make uh, different strategic decisions for, for the choice of solid electrolytes. Some companies such as OARA, TDK, NGK, AGC, and QuantumScape are focused on oxide solid electrolytes. Some Companies such as Intemitsu, Mitsui, Metal Mining, Hyundai, Furukawa are focused on sulfide solid electrolytes. And some companies such as Toyota, LGKM, Samsung, Murata, and Panasonic fill patents both on oxide and sulfide solid electrolytes. The repartition of patterns along the supply chain is linked to the solid state battery challenge. Improve solid electrolyte performances, improve the electrode electrolyte interface, and develop manufacturing processes compatible with industrial production. Battery manufacturers not only file patterns on battery and electrodes, but also on solid electrolyte materials. In fact, this company often have R&D labs dedicated to the development of new battery materials and collaborate with R&D labs on this topic. Similarly, material manufacturers also have patents on electrodes and battery. Toyota and Hyundai uh, really secured their IP position on the world supply chain and they have patents on the electrolyte materials, the electrode manufacturing, and the battery cells. Now let's focus on solid electrolyte materials, as it is the key and blocking component to get solid state battery with good performances. Patents have been manually categorized by type of inorganic solid electrolyte materials. Each segments have been deeply analyzed to determine main and key patent assignees, IP dynamics, newcomers, recent developments, key patents, so that we can compare IP position of companies by solid electrolyte materials. Uh, patents on inorganic solid electrolyte materials are mainly uh, oh, oh, linked to sulfide plus ceramic, garnet, and nazicon. And there are three main emerging um, inorganic solid electrolytes uh, antiperovskite, argeodite, and hydride. Garnet material is one of the main inorganic solid electrolyte materials. To identify key IP players on a specific topic, we, 
not only use quantitative analysis, such as the ranking of main IP player, according to the number of patent families, and IP leaderships, which, rep which represent the number of pending patent application in function of the number of granted patents. We also do qualitative analysis. The prior art blocking potential is based on the number of forward citation and evaluate the capability of a company to limit the patenting activity of other companies. The FTO blocking potential is based on the number of patent families with granted patents, geographic coverage, and number of forward citation of granted patents. It evaluates the capability to limit the freedom to operate of other companies. Qualitative analysis enable also to sort out companies with a small but strong patent portfolio. As you can see on this graph, on Garnet's solid electrolyte materials, Toyota has the highest number of patent families, granted patents and pending patent application. It also has a high our blocking potential and NFTO blocking potential indicated that it has the capability to limit both patenting activity and FTO to other companies. NGK also have a key IP position with numerous patent families, granted patents and pending patent application and a notable prior art and FTO blocking potential. Seiko, Samsung, Corning, and University of Michigan are IP challengers with numerous pending patent applications. Despite the, its relatively high number of patents, QuantumScape has a relatively low blocking FTO blocking potential and prior blocking potential. On the contrary, BASF and University Zukil have a small patent portfolio, but a strong prior art blocking potential and FTO blocking potential, induced by highly cited patents uh, and a high number of granted patents. This indicates that uh, they have the capability to limit both patenting activity and FTO uh, of other companies on specific inventions. Patents can also be used to identify key uh, uh, new technology trends. For the last five years, patents and rela uh, related to garnet electrolytes are mainly related to the manufacturing of well-known garnet materials. And recently, three main topics have emerged in patents related to garnet. The manufacturing method of solid electrolyte layers or materials containing either pure garnets or garnet mixed with an additional materials. The additional materials can be polymer binders, inorganic additive, other inorganic solid electrolytes, polymer solid electrolytes, and lithium salts. Another new topic is the development of material uh, composition and manufacturing methods of garnet materials containing additional materials, elements, and also uh, the development of material composition and manufacturing methods of garnet materials with uh, all substituent elements. To conclude, today Japanese companies dominate uh, inorganic based large scale solid state batteries patent landscape. Main IP players belong to the world supply chain, but uh, there are material manufacturers, battery manufacturers, electronic components, and car manufacturers. Since 2015-2016, uh, patenting activity in China has overcome patenting activity in other countries, induced by the emergence of numerous Chinese R&D labs and companies and strong patenting activity of foreign companies in China. Numerous car manufacturers start their patenting activity on inorganic-based solid uh, state batteries recently. BMW, Audi, Bosch, Hyundai, Volkswagen, Daimler, uh, SF Motors, and Honda. 
Patent assignees have different strategies regarding inorganic based solid electrolyte material choice, confirming that all these materials have both advantage and drawbacks. Purons most trendy materials are sulfide glass ceramics, nazicon, and garnets. And merging uh, solid electrolyte materials are hydride, antiperoxide, argyrodite, osteosulfide, and allied. For the next year, you should keep an eye on current main IP players still active, well-known material manufacturers, emerging IP players and startup companies, uh, inorganic polymer solid electrolytes, and trendy and emerging inorganic solid electrolyte materials. If you want to know more about uh, other type of solid electrolytes, you can check you can have a look on our reports and monitors available on our website. If you have any other questions regarding patent, um, patents in, uh, in the field of batteries, you can contact us. Thank you for your attention. Blair, thank you for that excellent introduction into the field of solid state batteries, particularly for our guests who aren't so familiar with the topic and also the business cases involved. I'm quite impressed by the meteoric rise in solid electrolytes in particular. Now, our second speaker today is LATAT's very own Dr. Christoph Alcher, the technical coordinator of the LISA project, where he's also our area manager for energy storage and his research focus is in post-lithium batteries in particular. Today, he'll give us an overview of the LISA Horizon 2020 project, where he'll help demonstrate the role that lithium sulfur has to play in the next generation of battery technology. Hello everybody. Okay, so my pleasure to this morning to present you um, Lisa European project. So this project has been uh, receiving the funding of the European Commission um, for an amount of uh, almost uh, 8 million euros uh, split in uh, in 13 partners. This project has been starting in uh, in January 2019 so we are more or less at uh, more than half of uh, of the project now. Here also to specify that um, there is uh, six uh, partners that are belonging to the previous uh, Alize project, uh, as Letat, uh, Fronover, Oxys, TUD, Varta, and Confil. Um, this is a good way to make the link between the, the good uh, the two projects and, uh, and to not lose uh, the knowledge and to, to keep continuing on the uh, promising uh, development. And uh, this consortium has been completed uh, uh, with uh, VDL and uh, Renault basically because we uh, target as a final application to apply lithium sulfur technology for larger pack uh, where the, the weight of the battery uh, start to be an issue. Uh, so the, uh, the graphic energy uh, density is uh, one of the big problems for lithium ion. So is why we choose uh, this application. Optimat is there for managing with the exploitation. Uh, Accurec will have a specific activity relating to recycling because uh, the first project was not comp uh, contemplating the um, recycling activity. And after we ask also to seek Energy Gunen, Arkema and Pulsedeon to join the consortium. Uh, because they have um, capacity to work at a uh, pilot level for material and for component. That was uh, one of the biggest bottleneck that we that we get in uh, in Alize framework. 
Um, so this is the objective of the project. So uh, the figure that you have on the right is uh, um, the statement that we put uh, in, in the proposal of, uh, of Lisa project. So basically we state uh, that uh, there is kind of two family of um, lithium ion uh, technology. Uh, lithium ion uh, oriented to power or, or lithium ion oriented to uh, to range no so basically we state that you can find performance for lithium ion between 150 to 250 watt hour per kilo uh, today there is some development at 300 watt hour per kilo um, and also uh, regarding the volumetric energy so you can find a model beyond 200 watt hour per liter up to uh, 700 watt hour per liter, depending the format of the cell. Huh? Basically, the most compact cell that you have are dedicated to uh, the smaller nominal capacity, so lower than, uh, than 5 uh, ampere hour. Um, Alize was dedicated to a plug hybrid vehicle, so he's explaining the, uh, the format of the cell with a bigger electrical tab, etc., and the limitation in, uh, in volumetric energy. Um, the LISA concept is uh, focusing on the, uh, the larger pack, so more on uh, energy density for full electrical car or electrical buses. And uh, we really try to, uh, to improve the key bottleneck of this technology that are the volumetric energy and, uh, and the cyclability. And the final blue circle that you can see the beyond LISA is basically what we state in, uh, at this moment in 2017, 2018, we believe that uh, lithium sulfur uh, uh, is possible to make practically uh, uh, cell beyond the 20 ampere hour uh, that are able to present uh, 600 watt hour per kilo, 800 watt hour per liter, that it is a pretty far away from what it is possible uh, theoretically. No? Uh, so we focus on the safety uh, of this technology, uh, the, that it is mandatory uh, for uh, such uh, technology. Uh, we want to improve uh, the volumetric on the cyclability. We will work on the recyclability. We will develop a specific state of charge on aging estimator for uh, BMS on second life application. Um, it is important to be done because uh, the behavior of lithium sulfur it is different of uh, lithium ion, so you need uh, a specific algorithmic. Um, LISA is focused on the um, uh, pilot manufacturing on components, so we work uh, on solid state electrolyte that means ceramic, on the uh, hybrid solid electrolyte that means composite between polymer to ceramic. Uh, and as I was commenting, this project is uh, dedicated to the larger pack, so full electrical car and the uh, electrical uh, buses. This is the baseline of, uh, of LISA, so basically the result of Alize project. Uh, so basically in Alize, we, we have been demonstrated that uh, uh, lithium sulfur is competitive uh, respect to lithium ion with a big reduction of uh, uh, the battery pack weight uh, at the pack level uh, and with performance that are uh, at the same level in terms of electric hammer range and also uh, uh, competitive in terms of power. Uh, uh, is working worse in terms of C-rate, but as you have more uh, energy density, you reach a similar current. Big bottleneck is the cyclability. Cyclability is super poor. Uh, here, the two first generation that you have is uh, using uh, uh, lithium uh, metallic foil and uh, the last generation of cell has been built with uh, uh, first coating on the top of the lithium and uh, yeah, the technology has been tested up uh, to the module level. So this is our baseline. Well, I believe most of you, you know, how is working lithium sulfur. Uh, it is uh, different than uh, lithium ion. This is not an intercalation technology. Mm -hmm. It is a conversion, what we call conversion technology, because uh, it's involving uh, um, chemical reaction when you start with a long chain of polysulfide at the beginning of the discharge to a shorter chain of polysulfide. So it is really... Uh, uh, chemical redox reaction along the, the charge and the discharge. Um, the useful voltage is about uh, 2.15, uh, so it's very flat uh, in, uh, in comparison to lithium ion and uh, is lower than lithium ion. 
Uh, here you have two models of unique stack. Um, so if you have a conventional unique stack, you are using using a lithium metal foil. No, you are working with an excess of um, of lithium metal because um, the reaction is not 100% uh, reversible. You have many issues regarding the stripping plating of uh, the lithium that it is not homogeneous, moisture lithium, dendrite, etc. You have corrosion with the current collector, and also you you have corrosion with the short polysulfide that come from the cathode to the uh, to the lithium metal anode to uh, uh, to react uh, with uh, with the lithium. No, you have to. Uh, 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 to manage to uh, to balance the quantity of electrolyte for for your cathode. Um, as active material, you are using sulfur. Sulfur is not conductive, so you have to mix uh, uh, with a, a conductive matrix. On the uh, the big challenge for uh, for the cathode is to make uh, something that it is dense. Uh, cathode is super light, but it is not dense. So the concept of Sliza basically is to to try to uh, to manage to kill the dead mat uh, to to make something thinner or to make something lighter. Uh, well, there is many uh, uh, optimization along the the unit stack. Uh, the important point there is um, this is not 100% uh, solid state. This is uh, we choose to keep. Uh, uh, liquid electrolyte on the, the cathode uh, that was good from the previous project, and uh, we mostly focus our development on the, on the on the anode side. Uh, the, so here you have a bit a split of um, the different uh, contribution from each partner. You have many innovation at uh, the material level. And uh, some of them um, are possible to, uh, to upscale in the framework of uh, of Lisa, you have also a split of budget, um, basically to indicate that uh, more than 50% of the budget is dedicated to um, lithium anode protection and lithium metal protection and also the development of uh, the dielectric, whatever it is, uh, ceramic, hybrid, uh, we are working on membrane also. Uh, what it is different from the previous project is um, really we try to fill this gap between the cell manufacturing and the upscaling of the material. So we have at least uh, seven pilot lines that are uh, ongoing in, the, in this project uh, with some partners that are focusing on the uh, material development of their own component. And uh, we have also several options to make a manufacturing of cell at a relevant level. Uh, uh, such a project that uh, is planned to finish at TRL 45, no? uh, you have to build at least uh, 200 units of cell uh, at a relevant uh, nominal capacity, hein, uh, 20 ampere hour, uh, because uh, for all what you want to test, for example, the safety is about 50, 50 cells, for the simulation is about 50 cells, for the electrochemical performance is about 50 cells. So you really need to produce a large amount of cell on component. Uh, now we will pass to the result. Uh, so we are more than half of the project now, so we, we start to have uh, some uh, some nice results, I believe. Uh, so here you have a proof of concept at uh, 18 ampere hour uh, cell level, so it's much beyond uh, anything you can find at cylindrical level. Uh, so we uh, we reached to achieve uh, to complete this milestone that was about uh, 400 watt-hour per kilo at the cell level. Uh, so we reached something that it is beyond 400 watt-hour per kilo on 400 uh, 450 watt-hour per liter. To give you um, some of the number uh, for making that, you need to produce at least uh, three kilo of composite, uh, 150 meter of cathode to to cut at least a thousand of uh, of cathode. Um, so this is a work principally that has been done between Oxys and Arkema. Uh, Oxys working on ink on coating uh, cathode manufacturing at pilot level on cell manufacturing. On Arkema working, uh, they have a specific uh, process uh, for making a compound on sulfur uh, done by uh, extrusion. Uh, so this is the, the, the material, uh, the active material we use um, in this uh, cathode formulation. 
As you can see regarding the KPI, we are still uh, not at the limit of uh, what we pro propose. So uh, we believe we still have room uh, for progressing there. Uh, this is uh, one other of the milestones that we pass uh, this April, consisting uh, uh, to uh, about the processing of the hybrid solid electrolytes. So here, this is composite between polymer and, uh, and garnet type. Um, so the first result uh, done at the coin cell level uh, compared to um, in our round robin test condition, so with a uh, state of the art uh, electrolyte, which is not the electrolyte that we use at uh, push cell level, um, show not um, something exceptional, no, at uh, at the coin cell level, uh, but at least something that it is functional. There is big difference uh, between what has been done in 2020 and what has been done this year. Uh, the size of the particle, the type of coating is completely different. Uh, now we reach um, uh, the final coating we have is about uh, seven micra on the top of the of the separator, so um, the performance will be different. But what we can see from the first result that we get at coin cell level is uh, after 50 cycles you have. Um, a lose of capacity that it is improved uh, regarding uh, uh, the baseline and also as commenting at push level we will have a different electrolyte so we believe that the decay that we have at the, on the first uh, cycle will be different also. Uh, this is another process that we are doing at pilot level and uh, it will be uh, explained by, uh, by Jari later on. Um, here the, the idea we um, so we use uh, this uh, physical process for making the deposition of um, uh, sulfide uh, uh, solid state electrolyte on lipon or other type of uh, solid state electrolyte and also lithium. So here in this case, you have lithium on the top of copper and uh, also comparing in our Rune robin test uh, baseline, we can see that we reach uh, comparable result uh, regarding using uh, lithium foil. So uh, comparing uh, 13 micra to uh, 250 micra in this in this case uh, thickness, um, the good point there is um, we are able to tune um, the quantity of lithium that we want to put in our cell. So this is impacting directly on on the watt hour per kilo and watt hour per liter that you have at the end of the day and also uh, to enable to make the deposition of uh, metallic current collector is enabling the manufacturability of your process because uh, uh, most of you work with lithium uh, anode uh, with lithium metal and you know that uh, below 100 micra the, the mechanical property is really poor so uh, to have it on the top of metallic substrate allow you to, uh, to think about manufacturing about winding electrolyte cutting etc no? Uh, this is another process uh, developing at the pilot level by Fronover, uh, protected by Fronover, and it has been uh, developing uh, in other projects like uh, uh, Maliba, uh, but uh, development has been starting more or less um, when we were starting with uh, Alize project. So today they are able to do it um, at pilot level. Uh, so this process basically is uh, consisting to melt uh, the lithium and to uh, print on the top of uh, the current collector the liquid metal. No? Uh, so here also you can uh, you can handle with a lower quantity of lithium and uh, optimize your uh, your cell. Uh, this is uh, our statement today of um, what we have, where we want to go, and uh, what we think is still possible to be done. Uh, regarding the energy density, we believe it's still possible to fit with uh, the final uh, objective. Um, yeah, all the, the finding that we get uh, during the two last year. Uh, with the component we have, uh, that it, it is not the limit for lithium sulfur, but what we have in this consortium, we believe that the final between what we have today and, uh, and a bit more. No? Uh, obviously, our top priority since one year ago is, uh, is to work on the safety and the cyclability that uh, we do not have a result today to, to show on it. No? Uh, this is a point on the on the IP. So um, uh, 
leading uh, the portfolio of uh, of patent uh, uh, regarding lithium sulfur. Here, the attention point that I wanted to uh, uh, to highlight is that uh, today uh, European uh, uh, roadmap are essentially oriented. Uh, because we have to focus uh, the effort and we have a limited uh, budget. Uh, but uh, it's uh, good also to take in account that in uh, in uh, in UK or in Germany the roadmap are a bit different and lithium sulfur is uh, is uh, an important uh, for the R&D development and uh, also here to point to that uh, yeah uh, there is a kind of um, what will happen no, if uh, tomorrow Asiatic player is able to, to produce uh, lithium sulfur that is enabling to make a thousand of cycle? Uh, for sure, it will be uh, beyond what we can get for, for lithium ion. Uh, here, uh, this is the next meeting for uh, the next big one for the um, community that it is working on lithium sulfur. So, uh, please follow the link, and uh, uh, we hope to uh, to see uh, many people to uh, this um, conference organized by uh, by Fronover that it is a uh, pretty successful uh, each time. Uh, so, uh, specifically on lithium sulfur next June on on July, if you want to know more about uh, this technology. And here, this is uh, the takeaway. So basically, the advantage we are far away from the theoretical uh, possibility of this technology. The price is uh, one of the advantage because um, sulfur is coming um, is a, a byproduct of uh, the oil and chemical industry. Uh, so you can have it very cheap. You have no nickel, no cobalt for the cathode. A lower environmental impact. Uh, so, uh, um, yeah, regarding of, on the previous command. And also, what it is important is um, allowing you not to have a kind of uh, diversification of the possibility of uh, technology that you can integrate in case uh, you have some application that are, that are uh, prioritized no, uh, to integrate technology on the other technology that will require. The address of the project. Uh, the cyclability today, we are not uh, able to prove something uh, that it is working better than 100 cycle, which is really our, our objective. And after, uh, we have to work on, uh, on the other secondary uh, uh, performance uh, parameters that are also important. So um, I would like to, to thank you all. Um, the people that are organizing this event, the speaker also that uh, uh, maintain their compromise no, to join us uh, today. I know that for at least one of them was complicated because of uh, COVID situation. And uh, also uh, by many thanks to all people that are connected today and uh, I really hope we will have a fructiful uh, discussion uh, during this morning on, uh, on beyond. Do not hesitate to, to contact with us. Many thanks. Thanks, Christophe, for providing that great overview of the LISA project. As you know, lithium sulfur has a remarkable theoretical specific energy. So I'm really pleased to be part of this type of project, which is really trying to push the state of the art forward. Our third speaker today is Dr. George Kaiser from FEV, where he's the team leader in the battery development department. He's had over 13 years in lithium ion development and cell characterization, and his work hasn't just been automotive, but also for stationary batteries. Today, he's joining us as the project manager for Sublime, where he'll give us an overview of the project.
Can you hear me now? I hope so. Okay, I'm going to start again. My name is Jörg Kaiser. I'm uh, here on behalf of the Sublime project. And um, I work for FEV, who is a uh, engineering service provider for the automotive industry. And uh, we are developing uh, batteries for electric uh, propulsion, uh, but we're not producing cells or producing electric vehicles. Um, but as a company, um, as FEV, um, one of our tasks is that we uh, monitor the market. And uh, what I am presenting here to you is a graph of the evolution of the gravimetric specific energy density of lithium ion cells, uh, in particular pouch cells, uh, for both uh, hybrid, plug-in hybrid, and uh, also full electric uh, vehicle batteries over the past 10 years. So what we observe here, uh, you can see here that the red dots are basically NMC chemistry, uh, starting, of course, with uh, older NMC compositions like 111, and today we see and MC622 and 811 already in the market, um, that uh, lithium ion technology has uh, constantly increased its uh, energy density over the past 10 years and uh, has roughly doubled the energy density from 150 watt hours per kilogram to 300 uh, watt hours per kilogram today. And this equals to an increase of um, about 7% per year. So it's a strongly dynamic field and um, what is uh, currently um, discussed is that uh, for, for the cathode material, uh, we will see um, lower cobalt uh, concentrations and going to maybe uh, 95 .5 NMCs in the future. And on the anode side, what we see is that um, the uh, industry is moving to higher um, silicon contents um, in the uh, graphite silicon anodes and um, uh, increasing the energy density there by this. Um, however, now the, uh, the, 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 the joint feature of these lithium ion cells still is the liquid electrolyte um, and the problem um, that um, at uh, low temperatures, uh, graphite and silicon might tend uh, to, to form lithium dendrites during charging. And uh, this is where we hope with uh, solid state technology, um, we can uh, tackle these uh, issues and problems. And um, so, um, we, we hope that uh, with uh, the supply project, but also with other projects uh, who are dealing with the solid state uh, technology, uh, we will reach uh, gravimetric um, energy densities in the order of 450 um, and maybe even higher in the future. And um, also, and this is not something that can be seen directly from this graph, um, increase uh, fast charging capabilities, increase safety, um, and maybe also increase the, the cost, of course, um, so that vehicles with a given package space uh, for the battery will have a longer range. So this is kind of the uh, motivation. And uh, how are we uh, planning to achieve these goals within supply? Um, I brought you here the uh, working plan. Um, and uh, what we are basically doing is uh, we are aiming for two types of cells. Uh, the first one is uh, called P1 pathway, um, which is a high energy variant uh, with a 10 amp hour uh, pouch cell format of uh, more than uh, 450 watt hours per kilogram and uh, more than 1200 watt hours per liter. The second pathway, P2, is a high power variant. Um, we will only build uh, laboratory cells um, according to our plan. Um, and uh, we are aiming at a power density of higher than five kilowatts per kilogram and a 5C charging rate um, with a focus on, on lifetime and also cyclability. So um, what we are planning to do and uh, what we have already started is um, we will use uh, lithium metal foils, of course, um, as an anode material for both the P1 and the, the P2 uh, variant. And the lithium metal foil needs to be uh, protected against uh, ambient um, uh, influences and oxidation. Uh, on the cathode side, uh, we will use an NMC 955 uh, cathode material uh, with more than 210 milliamp hours per gram and up to 4.3 um, upper cutoff voltage. And um, for the electrolyte, uh, we are going to uh, aim, or we are, we are aiming at 
uh, sulfidic materials, the geophosphates and uh, phosphopentasulfide materials um, with a conductivity of uh, at least uh, one millisiemens per centimeter um, and uh, for, for the high energy variant and uh, at least uh, five millisiemens per centimeter for the high power variant. Um, this is the material um, package. Um, we are also looking at upscaling or industrializing the uh, production of uh, solid state um, um, lithium ion cells. And this is here in the middle column the case. So basically, all processes to produce these raw materials uh, will be investigated and uh, scaled up so that we will have a uh, close to series production um, picture of how these uh, cells could be uh, produced on a, on a mass scale, um, especially for the 10 m hour cell, uh, which is a representative format for, for automotive um, cell sizes. Um, the processes will include uh, novel routes, which are solvent free um, for the extrusion of the, of the cathode, of the positive electrode in the solid electrolyte layer. And um, the um, yeah, also what is important when working with sulfides um, is uh, to define safety conditions and uh, how to handle and process materials uh, that are very prone or very sensitive to moisture uh, in the atmosphere and that can uh, produce uh, hydrogen sulfide, which is uh, toxic uh, and problematic um, and uh, needs to be avoided uh, during the production of, of the cell. And uh, then in the end, uh, if we have these cells then produced. We are going to investigate them with uh, both electric and um, gain of life, uh, cycle lifetime, calendaric aging uh, testing. But we will also look at uh, safety of uh, the safety behavior of these cells um, when it comes to transportation or also implementation or application in, uh, in vehicles on the road. So, this is our consortium. Um, as you can see, <clears throat> we are covering the whole spectrum from uh, active material producers such as uh, Umicore here uh, for the cathode material um, or, or Solve for the um, um, for, and for the for the electrolytes um, over uh, Saft as the um, uh, cell producer uh, from France uh, to CRF, uh, Fiat from Italy and Ford Autosan from Turkey. Uh, and other partners in between. I'm not going to mention all of them. Um, we are from eight countries, uh, 15 partners, uh, five from uh, R&D, uh, academia, and six industrial partners, um, and a total budget of uh, close to 8 million euros. This is how we are organized. Um, we as FEV are managing the project, basically covering all work packages. Um, then we have work package two, which is uh, led by uh, Fiat CRF, uh, which have uh, which has defined uh, the battery requirements and specifications um, in relation to electric vehicle applications, both for the high power uh, variant and also the high energy variant. And uh, this input uh, from work package two is then used uh, for the work packages three, four, and five. Um, whereas in work package three, which is uh, led by Solvay, um, the materials are synthesized and uh, also optimized and scaled up. And then uh, they, these materials are first tested in work package four, which is led by CIC, and where the materials are tested in uh, lab electrode format or lab cell format. Um, and characterized also in situ and ex situ testing. And then we have work package five, which is led by Saft, who are then uh, aiming at um, designing a um, industrial relevant sized cell of 10 amp hours, watch cell it will be, uh, including the uh, industrial production scale up and manufacturing. And um, work package six will then test uh, these cells, uh, both from work package four and work package uh, five, of course. And uh, we will not only do the testing, but also assessing the, uh, the cost assess, uh, the, the costs related to producing these cells, uh, sustainability and uh, safety, as I already mentioned. And uh, we also have one work package dedicated to um, simulating and modeling. And uh, we will model and simulate various aspects um, of the materials and also of the cells 
uh, to get a closer or a deeper understanding uh, of the processes and the um, um, and the aspects of the, these materials. And of course, we have work package eight, last but not least, um, where we have a dissemination uh, work package, which takes care of all the um, um, usage and um, publication of the results that are produced within Sublime. Sublime is uh, relatively young. We started in May last year. And uh, due to the COVID crisis, uh, which also affected our consortium, there were some delays. Um, so uh, we are now roughly uh, one year old here. Um, a number of uh, deliverables have already been um, accomplished and uh, uh, passed. And uh, here you can see the different work packages. Basically, everybody is on track now. Uh, we are working uh, for uh, 48 months. This is the duration of the project. Um, the triangles that you see here are the deliverables. Basically, most of them are confidential. Only the last two ones here and there uh, will be made public. Um, so um, you have to you have to look at uh, uh, the the activities of our dissemination in conferences and publications and papers uh, to learn more about uh, this uh, our our results. Um, coming. Briefly to the um, results that have been obtained so far, um, we have uh, in Word Package 2 uh, defined the specifications in terms of energy requirements, but also power requirements, fast charging requirements for the uh, high energy and the high power variant. Um, we have uh, also defined um, protocols for the uh, testing of the electrical properties of the cells of uh, the live tests, including uh, cycle life tests and calendaric aging tests, and also mechanical and abuse tests uh, were defined, which are then planned uh, for the uh, 10M hour cells. Um, we have uh, accomplished uh, to uh, write instructions how to handle and uh, process uh, these uh, sulfide electrolyte materials, especially um, with, uh, in relation to or with regard to the production of hydrogen sulfide, um, which is really toxic or highly toxic and uh, poses a um, um, really a challenge uh, when, when handling these materials, not uh, inside a glass box, but in a production um, area for, for larger large cell formats. Um, first electrolytes have been uh, synthesized and are now currently being investigated. Um, and uh, tested in uh, laboratory cells, um, the, the NMC955 material, where you can see here an SEM image and also the sulfidic material, uh, which are based on the uh, teophosphates and um, phosphosulfides. And also, um, we are working cur currently working on uh, protecting the lithium metal anode um, from, from corrosion or from oxidation uh, with moisture and with oxygen. And um, these things, uh, these activities uh, have also recently started. So with this in mind, this was what I can present to you uh, from the Sublime project. And uh, I will be happy to answer your questions uh, in the Q&A session then. Thank you. Thanks, Jorg. It's good to see how other projects are trying to work towards a similar ultimate goal as ours in Lisa. And I look forward to catching up with the Sublime project over the coming years. Just a quick reminder to our attendees to use the Q&A tab on the right hand side of the page if you do have any questions for our speakers. Our fourth speaker today is Frederic Agresse from CICE, where he leads the group on advanced electrolytes and cell testing. He's the coordinator of the Safe Li Move project and his research focus has been predominantly on solid state batteries, solid electrolytes, and their integration into complete cells. Good morning.
morning, everyone. Thank you for for the invitation to the to the organizer. It's a pleasure today to uh, to participate in this uh, in this workshop, uh, which is a very ex exciting actually because we are uh, at the at the beginning of a of a great moment where really uh, batteries are going to be uh, developed are going to uh, to uh, to really to take part of our daily life. So uh, I think it's a, it's a very exciting moment that we are all all living together. So today I will present the uh, uh, work and the development that has been done in the Safely Move project, another uh, European project that has been uh, uh, granted recently. Uh, I will start uh, by a brief introduction of uh, of the coordinator, which is the CAC Energy Gune, uh, a research center uh, based uh, in north of Spain, uh, in the region of the of the Basque Country. It's located actually in the in the city of Vitoria. We are mainly focused on uh, electrochemical and thermal energy storage, uh, where we have like a strong expertise. We are quite a young research center because we are 10 years old, but we are now more than 130 people uh, working in the, in the set center with more than 85% of, uh, of researchers. So we have a very strong dedication uh, to uh, research in European project as the one that I'm presenting today. But as well, we have uh, many industrial projects in one-to-one uh, -one collaborations. I would say one, one of our strengths is uh, not, uh, not only our expertise on the energy storage systems, but it's as well the uh, platform cutting edge tools that we have for characterization, uh, such as NMR, XPS, um, dry rooms uh, that are quite uncommon in, uh, in Southern Europe and, uh, and facilities that we are very uh, proud of. Uh, just an, a last overview on, uh, on, on the work that we are doing in the electrochemical energy uh, storage area. Uh, we are mainly focusing on uh, lithium ion and the new coming uh, energy uh, storage areas. So uh, we, ha we are focusing on, uh, on lithium sulfur batteries uh, that has been uh, presented briefly by Christophe Forcher. We are actually uh, participating in the LISA project. Uh, we have as well strong activities on metal air uh, supercapacitors and opening up as well with lithium ion capacitors on sodium ion based uh, batteries. And as well, we develop uh, new uh, electrodes, so new uh, ad advanced cathode materials, always uh, looking for higher stability, higher voltage, higher capacity, uh, strong work as well on, on lithium anode, lithium metal electrodes. And Within the project of Safe Move as well, a uh, strong dedication to uh, solid state electrolyte, both as ceramic rich electrolyte and as well as polymer rich electrolyte. So now going back uh, to the Safe Move project and going a bit more into details of the Safe Move project, uh, which is really the development of an advanced uh, solid state lithium metal technology, uh, which is going to be aimed for the electric vehicles. So really, that's a, a very strong aim that we have, and I will, I will come back on this point in the presentation, that all the development that we'll do uh, is for this purpose and for this integration. Uh, so a few facts on, uh, about Safely Move. Safely Move is, um, is a recent project that has started in uh, last year, in 2020. It's part of the call uh, of the European project that has been founding the project Sublime that has been previously introduced by York. Uh, we are actually uh, four projects that has been granted and we are forming a cluster uh, that, uh, with which we are going to uh, communicate and we are going to, uh, to share uh, some of the activity in order to make uh, the European, um, all the European partners stronger and, and the European project stronger as well towards an implementation into the, uh, the, 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 um, the European landscape, but as well in, in terms of the European landscape as well, in the, in the worldwide landscape. So this project is a four-year project uh, and is gathering uh, 15 different partners from uh, seven different countries. And uh, we are pleased as well to have six countries uh, from uh, Europe and one uh, partner who is from, uh, from Canada. So we had a kickoff meeting uh, last year in January 2020 at our facilities at CIC Energy Gune. Here you can see the different partners uh, that are participating in this uh, in this project. We have really in the project um, 
the top-down approach. I, will, I mean by top-down that uh, we have the requirements that are given by the OEMs, here the EV uh, producers. In this project are participating the group Renault and as well Toyota. Uh, they have been defining in the first month uh, what are the requirements in terms of sales. And then we have been uh, going down the um, down the, um, the scale in order to really uh, see what are the properties of the materials that are needed for these requirements. Part of the project as well, uh, we have some big companies such as SAFT uh, for the production of the, um, of the batteries. We have as well material producers and component producers such as SHOT, such as Hydro-Quebec, such as Umicore. So we have very strong players. We have as well Abi and the life cycle engineering team doing some life cycle assessment of the battery in order to evaluate the cost and to evaluate as well the recyclability of the of the materials and as well uh, in this project we have uh, uh, universities and technological centers that are bring bringing a very important add value uh, to the project as we are we because i'm part of cic Najumi and we as part of the consortium developing the new materials that will be implemented into the uh, into the cells that will be developed. So here we'll have uh, TU Berlin uh, in, in Germany, uh, we'll have uh, CDETEC in, in Spain, Ikerland, uh, the University of Aachen and uh, NCEA. Uh, Uni Research is as well part of the coordination of the, of the project. So why this project has been funded by the, by the European Union? I mean, we, we enter into a context uh, in Europe that we will have an expon exponentially growing market of the electric vehicle. So in the recent study that has been uh, realized by the McKinsey uh, uh, consultancy, uh, they have published that they are forecasting that the growing uh, market of EV production in Europe will reach 50 to 85% of all the electric vehicles that will be produced in, in Europe. This means that we will need uh, enormous necessity of batteries will need uh, is vertition is the, the, the really the quantity of, of, of energy that we need and of batteries and and we are talking here on ter terawatt hours uh, scale so if you do the equivalent in terms of gigafactory here it means that we will need between 45 and 85 or 95 uh, gigafactories in Europe so these are the uh, forecasts for 2040, but there are big projects, gigafactories are big projects, are long term and, and they required uh, a lot of uh, uh, money to set up, a lot of investment, a lot of space. Um, and really, uh, this is now that we have to start doing it. And actually, it is the case uh, in a recent study that has been performed uh, from CIC and Najigune, we have uh, done the complete mapping of the um, of the gigafactories in, in Europe nowadays, but this is changing every week. Every week, every month, we have one, two new gigafactories projects that are popping up. And, and you can see that nowadays, there are about 25 gigafactory uh, that are already planned in Europe, that are distributed in the, uh, in the countries, as you can see uh, here in the, in the slide. What is striking in this, uh, in this, in this slide is that many and some of the players are coming either from America or from Asia. So it is the case, for example, from Tesla that is setting up in Germany. It is the case as well of Samsung. And there are as well a few players from Europe. Uh, and what we need uh, is to have more players from Europe, to have more knowledge coming from Europe in terms of research that will arrive into uh, a gigafactory and then will arrive to our vehicles because we have a very strong knowledge on internal combustion engine in Europe, and now it's time to move it to the electric vehicle as it will be a dominant market in the future. So this is really the aim of all these projects within the, the call uh, BAT1. Uh, Safely Move is one of them, and we, we are happy uh, to be pioneers on, on, on this sense, on solid state batteries, because we believe that solid state batteries will be part of the future of the electric vehicle. So what are the challenges that have to be faced in order to have a solid state batteries arriving to the, to the market? So the first thing is to, is to beat lithium ion. We need to be as strong as 
a strong or better than conventional lithium ion technology in terms of parameters, in terms of energy densities, in terms of cost, in terms of recyclability, which is a very important factor in Europe. Uh, for that, we have taken the choice to go for the lithium metal technology. So on the anode side, we will have a lithium metal because it has a very high uh, specific capacity and the lower uh, oxidative voltage that, that, uh, that has for a material. Uh, but in order to put a lithium metal in a, in a battery, we need a solid state electrolyte. And this is the aim of the, of the project is to integrate all the different components, the anode, the cathode with the solid electrolyte. So nowadays, the limitation in solid state uh, electrolytes and particularly as the one here in this project on polymer based uh, electrolytes uh, is a limitation in terms of voltage. These materials are barely stable above 3.9 or 4 volt. So one of the challenges that we will have here will be to increase this stability, to develop new ways of, of uh, stabilizing the electrolyte, stabilizing the cathode in order to achieve higher um, voltages. One of the other drawback is the uh, operating temperature. So nowadays, the same, the solid electrolytes uh, operates only above uh, 70 degrees. So uh, here we'll have this facing, we are facing the same challenge is to decrease the operating temperatures to, temper to room temperature. So safely move uh, by uh, tackling all these different uh, challenges, we'll aim to develop a next generation of lithium uh, metal solid state batteries. So how um, the safely move battery will be, um, will be developed? First, we'll have a lithium metal anode, as I mentioned. Uh, then we'll put uh, a solid electrolyte uh, that we will aim to have as thin as possible. The solid electrolyte will be polymer based. It will be actually a hybrid polymer ceramic electrolyte. Why a hybrid polymer ceramic? Because we will aim to, um, to use all the flexibility and the processability of um, polymer electrolyte in order to uh, uh, have a, a fast uh, production capabilities. And we want to have a ceramic electrolyte uh, in order to achieve a high conductivities because ceramic electrolyte has higher conductivity than the polymer counterpart. Then we'll have the cathode uh, that we will be uh, mixing high voltage cathode, uh, NMC base, nickel rich uh, layered oxide, uh, it will be uh, with a high loading and it will be attached to a current collector. So the idea will be to uh, uh, increase uh, or to increase the capacity loading and to decrease all the parts uh, that are very important, such as the separator and the electrolyte, uh, but that, that, that they are occupying uh, volume. So with that, we aim to produce uh, 10 amp hour cells at the end of the project uh, that will have an energy, an, an energy density of 450 watt hour per kilograms and a 1200 watt hour per liter. So these are very challenging targets, very high targets uh, that we have a big hope uh, that we will achieve uh, by the end of the project. As I mentioned, we'll develop it in, um, in a full cells of 10 amp hours and we'll have as well the development of a battery pack using six of these cells of 10 amp hours into a complete pack that will have its own um, thermal management system and BMS. Uh, in these batteries, in this configuration, there are many challenges in terms of interfaces. There are interfaces at the lithium metal within the electrolyte on the cathode side at the current collector and we have as well a strong dedication in the project to understand what is ongoing in these interfaces and, uh, and really to develop a know-how uh, that will belong to Europe, that will belong to each partner and that will be able to be uh, applied uh, for the production of the, of the battery. That will also be envisaged in the project as a broad mapping of, uh, of, the, of the production of solid state batteries in Europe. So to develop this project, we will be based on four pillars. So the first pillar will be to develop uh, advanced uh, materials, 
the let's say we want aim to develop the most appropriate and the best uh, materials uh, to be implemented in the solid state cells. So we are talking about the cathode, NMC cathode, which has a capacity above uh, 200 million power per gram, uh, which has a very low content of cobalt uh, because cobalt as critical raw material is an issue. Uh, we aim uh, to, uh, to have an electrolyte that work at room temperature and that work as well um, with a high uh, ionic conductivity. Uh, as well, uh, we will have a lithium metal anode as thin as possible. Uh, it will most probably uh, be below uh, 50 micrometer thin. Uh, that will be done at a production scale, so it means that it has to, uh, to comply a lot of requirements in terms of mechanical property as well as, in, as, well of, as of performance. And uh, lithium metal has been chosen because of the high capacity of the material. In terms of advanced electrolytes, advanced um, optimized interfaces, uh, we will have a complete uh, a study of the different interfaces because solid state batteries are very difficult to, uh, to analyze uh, because they are, uh, it's, it's one block, it's one monolith. Uh, so we are developing new ways of analyzing uh, the solid state batteries and to understand the interfaces. Then we'll go to the, uh, to the design and the processing of the, of the cells. So uh, here increasing uh, the loadings increase to, in order to increase energy density, uh, seeing how the processing at a large scale is possible and as well implementing the, the BMS. And, uh, and finally, uh, we have uh, a full study in terms of uh, life cycle assessment of the production that we'll do and of the batteries that will be uh, proposed in this uh, project. Uh, taking into account as well uh, the recycling, for example, of the, uh, of the materials. And, uh, and uh, we have, uh, and we want, we aim to be very competitive in terms of uh, IP generation in order to have and the possibilities to keep all the IP uh, within uh, Europe. So the project will be developed in different steps, uh, starting from uh, monolayer cells that has been already done and that, that they are under study. Uh, of one amp hour cells as well that will be developed by the end of this year. And from one amp hour, we'll jump to 10 amp hour cells that will be produced by uh, our battery manufacturer uh, at a very large scale. So the target of the, of the, um, of the project are in twofold. Uh, first is to increase volumetric and gravimetric energy density uh, to be above the state of the art. So here we are showing in this graph that is above the state of the art of uh, the batteries when the project has been written. So now the state of the art is always going to be increasing, but we aim by 2040, 2024, sorry, to be still above uh, the, the, the new uh, batteries that are, that are produced. And why is that? Because we need to have long driving range for the electric vehicles. And mentioning electric vehicles as well, something that is very needed is fast charging. So we will do some tests and we will uh, prepare batteries that can handle 10 C current uh, in order to uh, achieve a power density of 10 kilowatt hour, 10, 10 kilowatt per kilograms by 2030. It will be a safe technology compared to the lithium ion and uh, it's going to be cost competitive. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we are going to reduce the quantity of the materials that are uh, important, but uh, taking volume and not participating into the capacity in order to decrease the cost and, and to make the, the production level uh, as fast as possible and as um, easy for the production of, the, um, of, of large amount of batteries and that can be in included into a gigafactory. We aim for developments that are uh, of materials that are sustainable and scalable. So uh, with that, I will uh, I will conclude my uh, my presentation of the project Safely Move. Uh, you can find more information on the on the website on safelymove.eu. Uh, we are very active uh, and always um, showing the new advances of the of the batteries, the later advances on on the topic. And uh, we are very active as well on the, on the social media, uh, such as Twitter 
and you can as well subscribe to uh, to receive our, our newsletter uh, that include as well as i mentioned at the beginning the work done by the cluster of the four different projects of the um, of this call with that i would like to thank for your attention and thanks again uh, the organizer for for inviting me thank you Thanks, Frederick. Your project has some remarkably strong partners, so I'll be enjoying looking forward to uh, reading it in the future. Your start on the Gigafactories was actually quite startling to me, but it was, it's very encouraging to see that industry is already moving. So now I'm pleased to say we can have our first Q&A session of the day, and hopefully our first four speakers are still there. So uh, our first question is to you, Fleur, which is, uh, which is the proportion of patents related to solid electrolytes compared to liquid electrolytes? Is there still activity in the liquid electrolyte world? Or? Uh, first, you have to know that there is more than uh, 300 dozen patents related to lithium-ion uh, batteries. And uh, yes, there is still a lot of activities uh, related to liquid electrolytes. Uh, I, I think it's about um, more, more than 50% of patents related to lithium-ion batteries. Great, thank you. Uh, our next question is directed to Christoph, and it's, uh, what are the possible end markets for lithium sulfur technology? So, um, today the, the end market that it is consolidated Today, the end market that it is consolidated by uh, by people um, providing this uh, uh, this technology at uh, at pilot level is dedicated to uh, military and uh, low weight application. So basically, aerospatial and uh, aviation. Uh, you have uh, uh, some example of uh, pseudo satellite application. And the uh, more you will increase the number of cycles, the more you will get uh, uh, new applications. So um, starting by the drone, um, on the larger pack, as we are commenting in, uh, in this project, and so on. No? Mm -hmm. uh, so we still have uh, to improve some of the CAP AI. Thank you. Our next question is to Jorg, which is, why were sulfides chosen to be explored in Sublime compared to alternatives such as oxides? Um, we chose sulfides because uh, we see that they have a potential in terms of uh, conductivity, which is um, superior, let's say, to, to oxides, um, which should come handy if we think of uh, lower temperatures in automotive applications, which can, of course, have winter temperatures. And this is one aspect. The second aspect would be the um, better mechanical properties um, in terms of uh, softness and mixing it with a cathode active material to form a dense uh, cathode layer in the cell. Um, this was our motivation for the sulfide materials. Ah, thank you, Joe. Our next question is to Frederick which is, uh, how do you foresee the stability of polymer ceramic electrolytes at high voltages? Yes, yeah, this is a, a good question, and and, and there are many uh, challenges in order to face uh, this uh, this stability. Uh, this is all the goal of the of the project, really, to develop uh, a new polymer system or a combination of new polymers uh, that will be able to uh, to withstand this uh, these high voltages, uh, really, to avoid any any degradation during uh, uh, cycling, and uh, so we can obtain actually very very long uh, cycle life of the of the materials. Uh, this is all part of the of the project. Uh, some very good results have already uh, been obtained in terms of stability. Uh, as well, in terms of stability, we have different uh, coating approaches on the uh, on the cathode and active materials parts uh, that will all in all enable to um, uh, to to stabilize uh, the interface between the solid electrolyte and the active materials, and to uh, enable a long cycle life of the of, of the battery. Great, thank you. Uh, we can have another question. We've got enough time to ask everyone another question. So, Fleur, 
Uh, there are a lot of patents related to solid state batteries. Do you think there's still space to enter the field? Uh, yes, I think uh, there is a lot of different technologies related to uh, solid electrolyte and solid state batteries. So if you want to enter the market, you really you have an idea uh, on which electrolyte you want and so on. So you have to check the patents where you related to the, your specific um, targeted electrolyte. And uh, for the battery cells, you have to check uh, the combination of the anode, the cathode, and the electrolyte materials. And uh, yes, there is still some space. Interesting. Uh, another question for Christoph, which is, do you think any of the LISA developments could be transferred to lithium-ion technologies? Um, we believe it is feasible. Uh, uh, mostly it has been always the, uh, done in the past for, I'm thinking, for example, to the electronic management by impedance. Uh, this is something that is coming from the field of uh, lithium sulfur on the proper to the development that we are doing today uh, for electronic, like the agile modeling uh, for second use. This is something uh, that could be used for lithium, uh, the concept at least, and the method to, to do it. Uh, and also, as we are mostly focusing on the protection of, uh, of uh, the lithium anode, or also building our own lithium metal. Uh, I believe this kind of, uh, of development can be used for, for lithium-ion. Great, thank you, Christoph. Uh, for Jorg, uh, obviously you have a background in automotives, so uh, do you think there'd be the most interesting, I beg your pardon, uh, what do you think would be the most interesting project results uh, from an automotive perspective? Um. So far, we have seen a very promising results in uh, solid state technology over the past years on mostly laboratory cell format. And when it comes to automotive batteries, uh, we have well, we deal with larger cell formats, which bring additional issues or problems. Um, one of them is uh, safety, um, safe, safety tests uh, that we are planning to do in, uh, within the supply <clears throat> um, will give us very interesting, I think, insights how these uh, larger solid state cells behave when they are shorted or mechanically crushed or overcharged. Um, these are things you cannot really learn from, from small cells. And, but also the integration into the battery. So how are the cells uh, put in a, in a battery package space? Uh, do they need a pressing? Um, how are they uh, cooled or heated up probably? Um, and uh, how, how can a vehicle be operated based on solid state technology? Fascinating. So we only have enough time for one more question now, which is to Frederick, which is, uh, how has recycling been taken into consideration within the cost model? Hey, well, recy recycling and, and sustainability uh, is a very uh, important topics on, on the European level. Uh, and uh, uh, within the project, we are not going to do uh, some experiments in terms of, of recycling, uh, but we'll do a, a complete uh, modeling of the, um, of the of the chain uh, from the production of the materials to the to to the to the end. So we'll be here the recycling and for some components uh, to get rid of them or to um, I mean that they will be used as as, as trash. Uh, so so here they will. Uh, take into consideration uh, our partners, uh, which is life cycle engineering. They will take into consideration all the different components uh, that have the capabilities of being recycled, as well with the help of, of some other partners that have already some, some data on this, uh, on this type of, um, of activities. So recycling and as well in terms of sustainability, in terms of cost or in terms of, uh, of, uh, of production costs, environmental costs as well, not only uh, cost in terms of money, and uh, and all that will be taken to um, uh, into this model in order to uh, to get to a final uh, to a, to a final um, uh, value and variable that that can be uh, presented uh, and and say what would be the percentage of sustainability of this of these materials and of this battery. Great, thank you very much. So we've had a few more questions that have come in, but we'll try and address them at the very end of the event today. So moving on now, we have our next speaker. 
Alex Friesen from Daikin Chemical Europe, where he's the R&D leader of battery materials and processing technology. Today, he'll give us an insight into the latest developments in hybrid polymer solid state electrolytes. Good morning. Um, so, uh, thank you, everybody, um, uh, for the introduction, and um, thank you for the possibility to present Daikin and also our developed technology. Um, let me start. So, we will talk today about the hybrid polymer solid state electrolyte um, based on our Daikin technology. Uh, but I would like to start with an introduction to Daikin itself. Um, so Daikin Industries is actually a large corporation based uh, with a headquarters in Japan, in Osaka. Uh, it's mostly annoying if we're known for heating, ventilation, and air conditioning business. But uh, what the most people do not know is that Daikin Industries has a large department for chemicals, which is coming from uh, historically also from the fluorinated business uh, or fluorinated chemicals. Uh, which was in co-development with the air conditioning business. So there was uh, historically producing refrigerants. Today, Daikin Chemical uh, is a worldwide, uh, it's a global chemical company um, with worldwide uh, production and sales um, offices and network. Spe especially in Europe, we have uh, four production uh, locations, one in Germany, in Frankfurt, one in Netherlands, and um, in France and in Italy. Everything is coordinated from our head office in Dusseldorf and our R&D is focused at the moment um, or is located in Münster as well as in Germany. But I would like to introduce today also our um, next move for, for Europe, um, which uh, from where we want to drive the innovation um, uh, specifically for Europe and in Europe. We are currently um, our new Daikin Chemical Europe Innovation Center. This is located in Dortmund. And uh, the construction site is actually already nearly finished and we will move at the late summer, early autumn to our new laboratories or to our new innovation center. And um, this innovation center is focusing on the European market where we would like to strengthen the collaboration between OEMs, tiers, external institutes, and, um, and of course, academic partners and to form a strategic innovation partnerships. We will provide an open innovation hub for joint development programs inside our technology incubator programs. Of course, with partners, startups, and also academic partners. And here we will provide the co-space, co-working spaces, including open lab area for a joint research. Um, our innovation center will focus on three technology areas. So the technology incubators, first of all, energy storage. This, um, of course, is the lithium ion battery, a solid state battery and fuel cells. Um, and uh, of course, uh, we have electronic automotive and 5G as an incubator and surface modif modif modification technologies. Just some key facts for the innovation center. This is located in the um, business area Phoenix West in Dortmund. This was an old uh, steel factory area, but now it's becoming a very modern uh, business area, which is kind of nice. Uh, we will have, um, when we're fully operational, over 4,000 square meters of laboratory area. And what's very important for batteries, we will have included, uh, we will have also a um, dry room. So finally, we are going to the dry room and switching from the glove box work. Of course, um, we have lab wet chemical labs and everything uh, necessary to have also electric chemical evaluation. So cell manufacturing and et cetera is also included, of course, on a laboratory scale. Um, in total, we will have um, three groups inside the innovation center. First of all, this is the marketing. Then we will have uh, application development and R&D and also the application engineering combined with technical service. 
Our organizational structures is uh, set in three different pillars. One is the direction setting pillar. So the foresight where we have really um, have the technology scouting and um, on an early stage. And here's uh, the route for the technology programs, um, which are mostly R&D based. And here's exactly the three pillars, uh, three technologies we have for the technology incubators. This is um, mostly on the lower TRL level, let's say. Um, but we want to push it to a higher TRL level inside these programs and provide it uh, um, afterwards to the business accelerator where the technology is already major, where we can support our um, business accelerator in providing these solutions to our customers. Um, let's go to the fluoro materials from the battery applications. So, um, a Stikin, a Stikin chemical is a fluorine based chemistry supplier. Uh, we have already several materials uh, commercially available for lithium ion battery, for, so for the conventional lithium ion battery. Here, for example, we have the fluorine based gasket materials, which enable long term reliability and stability. Um, so, like, um, they are betting better in chemical resistance and they are better in um, yeah, uh, closing the cell. Furthermore, our um, bigger um, know-how is coming from the cathode binder. And here we have uh, several solutions, for example, um, binder additives, which enable, for example, nickel-rich cathode material produc production. So we could solve some issues like gelation. Um, we could increase the electrode density by allowing it to uh, process it with a higher calendaring force. So the volume is decreased um, with the addition with the binary. We can also increase the flexibility and decrease, of course, uh, um, crack formation inside of um, uh, inside winding of cells, for example, in cylindrical or prismatic cells. Uh, furthermore, we have uh, materials for separators. Then we have also materials for electrolyte additives and solvents. And here for the liquid electrolyte, we are focusing more on, uh, for example, non-flammable uh, properties, uh, gas suppressing, and high voltage stability. So um, oxidative stable additives and solvents. One of our newer products is the Kinder cathode binder with um, single wall carbon nanotubes, which allow the manufacturer of cathodes uh, higher adhesion and a lower resistance. And with this combination of materials, you can increase even more the um, active material loading. Um, for the old solid state batteries, um, Daikin globally works on um, binders, coatings, and polymer electrolytes. For the binder, we could develop a sulfide, uh, for the sulfide based technology, a binder which works quite well, so which works with a lower polarity solvents. Uh, for ox oxide based solid state electrolytes, we developed also for the slurry based process route an excellent binder system. Furthermore, for the sulfide-based solid electrolytes, we have um, coating technology to increase the uh, resistance of sulfide-based electrolytes against moisture and humidity. And on the polymer electrolytes, this is our mainly our work from the Münster laboratories in Europe, where we work in um, consortia projects. One of it is Astrobot, where we have also some results shown today. And this other project is a French-German project called Molybe, but today we will not focus on this one. So let me introduce uh, our strategy for the solid-state electrolyte development. So as you know, there are several different classes of materials, oxides, sulfides, polymers, and of course liquids. Each of these technology has their advantages, has their disadvantages. If you look at the polymers, they have one big advantage, which we see is the mass production feasibility. However, um, polymers lack on ionic connectivity and stability. So on their own, polymers would likely not fully work or at least not uh, uh, desired temperatures. With the fluorine chemistry, what we uh, have in our know-how, we can directly solve the stability issue, but the ionic connectivity is still the same an issue furthermore. So our strategy is to go from polymers to hybrids. Um, so the hybrids actually have the full possibility of uh, all materials. So we can, at least this is our approach to have all advantages of all systems. 
However, the hybrid system is highly complex as the just through the variation of materials and the formulation, um, you have infinite amount of um, yeah, experimental work in front of you. But still, this is a most promising approach for our side. So combining polymers with liquids and um, solid state, other, other solid state electrolytes. So our development goal for for the polymer is um, to provide uh, or to develop a modular polymer base adaptable, which is adaptable to different solid state battery strategies, formulations, active materials, and processes. So have a really a, um, tool base for, for the customizable preparation of um, hybrid electrolytes. Herefore, we are using Daikin's know-how on PVDF copolymers and lithium ion battery binder technology to provide best in class polymer matrix for hybrid electrolyte, which is easy to implement because PVDF is a conventional uh, binder for kettles, as you know. So the technology is already there, how to process it. And each cell manufacturer has the technology on their own. And we would like to provide them a system which works with their own in-house technology um, but it provides them uh, the best uh, possible matrix for this uh, kind of developments. Um, maybe just short um, to solid fluoropolymer electrolytes. So the biggest advantage is the high oxidation stability. So we have just the intrinsic stability of this kind of uh, polymers, which allow us to work at high voltages and to combine these materials also with nickel rich um, uh, highly reactive cathode materials. So um, this is already a good starting base, but however, our um, drawback is of course the ionic connectivity and this is our approach, how we want to uh, solve this uh, disadvantage. Um, so why are we using Daikin PVDF copolymers? Um, compared to PVDF homopolymers, we can decrease with our um, polymers copolymers. Um, the crystallinity and the low TG. So directly only from the polymer base, we have the ability to increase the ionic conductivity and we have an elect uh, intrinsic electrochemical stability. So this is uh, three of the core properties for a polymer based uh, electrolyte system. And this is what we have and what we can offer um, as a development toolkit to develop hybrid electrolyte systems. Um, furthermore, this is not only one product, this is a product family. Um, so this is a, in total a very versatile platform, which has many candidates where you can choose the parameters you want, um, which are necessary for your process, for your material choice, um, and which is easy to adapt to different process routes. For example, low solvent casting, melt casting or extrusion. Um, coming now to the, some results, um, in the EU-funded project Astrobat, where we are involved, uh, we are focusing mostly on a mechanical stable electrolyte film. So we are working in this area um, from the formulation triangle. Um, so on the x-axis, you have the polymer and we could identify that 40% of polymer um, is the lowest content where we still have a mechanical stable film, which allows um, flexible film production. So we, this leaves us to, um, to the possibility to this high variation triangle where we have 60% uh, or 60 weight percent where we can try to find and optimize the content for lithium salt and uh, liquid plasticizers or solvents. Here on an example, you see um, some R&D polymer which we prepared with um, same amount of polymer and liquid and it was perfectly stable and um, still stiff. Um, and uh, very good to process. Of course, we have also this whole field um, with a uh, lower polymer content um, where we go to then swollen electrolytes. So this is um, mechanically not stable anymore, but could use as uh, gel type electrolytes. So this is only one example for one specific polymer uh, we are using in this Astrovat project. Um, we have still the possibility to tune the polymers. So this triangle of formulations can shift them to different uh, areas. Um, coming to the ionic connectivity, uh, we started inside the Astrobat project with our baseline. So this means we have only polymer and lithium salt. 
here we had this uh, the lowest conductivity actually, so the conductivity is not good, um, but this was as expected, and uh, we could reach um, inside yeah the first year actually of Astra, but a tremendous increase in conductivity by only choosing this uh, the right plasticizers and solvents and to find the correct or um, good working formulations. All these um, different variations are showing mostly um, some combinations of plasticizers, solvents. In no case, we have more than 30% liquid content. And we also introduced inorganic filler materials. It could be um, non-conducting inorganic filler materials like aluminum oxide nanoparticles to strengthen the mechanical stability, for example, or to tune the polymer properties even more, or you can also introduce um, um, inorganic lithium conducting materials to increase, of course, the conductivity as well. So this is a choice. So um, this works quite well. So we could, we could already show in the first year that the uh, um, provided uh, polymer base is a good choice to have a high variation of materials. And this is um, highly adaptable to different formulations and manufacturing to manufacture high conductive electrolytes. Of course, one of the, with a higher amount of liquids, we have also the issue with the lithium transference number. At the moment, we are in the range of 0 0.25 and 0 0.35. So this is the same lithium transference region also of the um, liquid electrolytes. But of course, it depends on the formulation and materials. But our current target, development target, is to increase this lithium transference number to higher, to higher numbers to already have with this kind of conductivities a good working system for um, for cathodes with a, um, with a good mass loading, with a practical mass loading. So with this, I would like to conclude my talk. So our mission was to provide or to develop a modular polymer base adaptable to different solid state battery strategies, to different formulations, active materials and processes. And we could already provide a um, quite good system, which is still under development, of course, but we could already provide really good um, results. Um, and we could already show that we have a very versatile platform for the hybrid electrolyte development. And our three core targets is easy to adopt. So we have a compatible material, which, is, um, which can work with uh, high, higher voltage kettle materials, for example, nickel rich NMC. Um, it should be easy to process. So it should be compatible with conventional lithium ion production processes like solvent casting, roll to roll, et cetera. And it should be also compatible with alternative production processes, for example, melt casting, extrusion, and further processes, of course. And of course, one of the most important points is um, it should be easy to customize. So as we believe, every cell manufacturer would have their own technology, how to adopt some technologies, how to, pro um, how to process everything. They have their parameters for the production um, and they have a preferred choice of materials. So uh, we don't want to finalize this, uh, this product we have. We want just to provide a perfect tool case or um, toolkit for the cell manufacturer um that they are able to uh, customize it so far that they are have the perfect material for their needs uh, with this i would like to thank uh, first of all the eu funding from the european union's horizon 2020 research and innovation program also i would um, like to mention um, please check astrobot project here the website also for the for more information and I would like also to thank the Astroban team at Daikin, uh, especially Timo and Alex, who is doing mostly the most work in the laboratories. So thank you very much. Uh, we are open if you need um, more information, if you want to collaborate, if you want to uh, learn more about the technology, uh, please feel free to write me an email. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alex. Uh, it's great to see this kind of confidence and investment in Europe, particularly when it comes to the battery industry. 
this best of both worlds approach seems uh, very interesting and presents a whole world of opportunities in terms of collaborations. Now our sixth speaker today is Dr. Yari Limatinen, the CEO of Pulsidion, where he's worked with a number of technology companies in various managerial and advisory positions. He's had a focus on energy storage, uh, including next generation batteries and also green hydrogen. Uh, advanced batteries require advanced manufacturing techniques and today he'll be speaking to us about pulsed laser deposition technology and its applications. Please confirm that you can hear me. Okay, uh, my name is Jari Limatane. I'm CEO of, of Palsedeon, and, uh, and I have been making this presentation together with my co-worker, Mr. Ville Kekkonen, who is also uh, managing the VP3 in the LISA program. So I'm going to tell you about uh, our technology for ultra-thin lithium anodes and uh, inorganic solid-state electrolytes for next generation batteries. And our processing tool is plus pulse laser deposition. And we are located both in E, it's uh, very northern Finland, that's where we have the, our heavy labs. And then we are working also in Tampere University campus area, where we are mainly focusing on, on target material processing and post-processing technology uh, for the pulse laser deposited layers. Uh, our focus is in uh, our focus is in ultra -thin lithium anode. Now I have, I have an echo here. Inorganic solid state electrolytes and barrier surface engineering solutions. And these are like in the toolkit for LIS uh, batteries, semi solid state or hybrid uh, solid state batteries, and uh, all solid state batteries. Uh, this is a sketch of this uh, PLD technology. I won't go into, de into details, but, but based on our uh, analysis, it offers several benefits, uh, especially for the next gen, uh, four, five gen resolutions. Again, I have an echo. So the, the focus areas for us are both in the lithium sulfur. And, and solid state metal batteries. And uh, if you look uh, from the uh, point of view of, of this uh, slang and terminology in, in, in battery space, we talk about 4A, B, and C and Gen 5 batteries. We have a wide portfolio of programs, both funded by Finnish government and EU. And we are also now invited or discussing participation in four new uh, EU-funded programs. We also have a uh, half a dozen uh, bilateral industrial projects in, in Europe, USA and Asia, which are related for this uh, generation four and five uh, battery technologies. About the key solutions, so uh, one of these baseline solutions that we are working on is, is based on manufacturing the anode side with the barrier layer and the solid state uh, electrolyte. And one of the baseline solutions is that we have a current collector, thin lithium metal anode made by PLD, barrier layer if required, and also the LPSX family of materials. We have different options that we are now working on. And the logic is that we can produce all these layers with the same process and as one co component to be integrated for the for the cathode side of the of the battery. And the uh, benefits that we can provide are precise uh, deposition of lithium metal anodes and solid state electrolytes for any thickness. So for example, lithium, we are working from one to 20 micrometers for solid state electrolytes, where we are mainly focusing on LPS, X family of material. And we talk about uh, 100 nanometers up to 15 micrometers. We are processing materials in inner atmosphere, so we can manage, uh, for example, issues related for the, for the LPSX and lithium metal exposure for the air or moisture. 
Typically, we have very good adhesion between different layers of materials. We can maintain stoichiometry. Uh, we are, and we don't have any exposure for the environment. And our processes is based on roll to roll, or in some cases, sheet to sheet process. Further work that uh, that we are now working at the moment is as the previous speakers already mentioned: surface engineering, how we manage uh, stability and performance conductivity between layer structures. One of the uh, items, especially in LPSX family of materials, is that how we optimize ionic conductivity and dendrite growth resistance. Of course, we also work in different LPSX uh, family of chemistries so that we can manage the uh, not just the performance, but also easy handling and, and, uh, and processability. We also work on in situ post processing technology, which means in practice that directly or simultaneously with the PLE process, we also apply thermal or some other techniques to improve quality of the material. And then we are also optim optimizing target materials processing so that it fits well for the PLE process. Typically, target materials are designed for sputtering applications, and they are not always good enough or fit for our process. Another approach that we are also working now in this LISA program is that we actually apply this, uh, uh, this uh, solid state electrolyte on polymer or cellulose uh, membrane. And on top of that, we make the, the barrier if required and le then lithium metal. And uh, one thing that is, is beneficial in this concept is that we can actually produce cell standing SSC membrane. Uh, we can apply minimal thermal damage because. In principle, it's a cold method, and we also have good adhesion for various substrates. Further work is that we have to design, design the, uh, the material and porosity to fit for our process. We are aiming to reduce thickness of the cellulose and polymer. We may go down to maybe 10, 50 micrometers, and we also have to design the post processing technology. About the processing roadmap, because that is, of course, in the end, very important from lab scale to industrial. So, so in principle, we have these four stages in the processing. We have the target materials manufacturer. We are playing with the different uh, compounds uh, uh, like lithium and of course compounds for the uh, for the solid state electrolyte manufacturing. Then PLD processing itself, and then post processing, and mainly all these case should be done in compact atmosphere. It may be a cloud box minimum type of environment. This is our lab scale machine. You can see that, that we can manage the processing and handling materials in the, in the glove box, which is integrated for this deposition chamber wall. This is depot chamber and this is the glove box. We have different transfer units so that we can handle material transfer from depot chamber to the, uh, uh, the, the glove box for further work. I skip all this. Iron conductivity measurements uh, and other stuff are uh, critical for us. All that has to be done in uh, in uh, yeah, in glove box. Our demo scale machine is going to be utilized more, more uh, next summer when we have the integrated glove box available. We will multiply our capacity, uh, not just. Uh, the, uh, the R&D volume, but also the size of samples that we can process. If we include this roll-to-roll machine, where we, keep, where we can handle uh, uh, different uh, materials, including copper, nickel, cellulose, and, and polymers. This is semi-industrial scale machine, uh, where we can handle 250 millimeter, millimeter white material. It will be available next uh, year, Q1. Uh, it's a roll-to-roll -roll machine. Uh, and, and we can make one, mil, one kilometer long uh, membranes using this. Uh, this, uh, And then industrial system will look like this. Our target is that it will have, with, uh, in theory, up to two meters. It will contain uh, uh, depot chambers in sequential manner so that we can, we can increase the capacity. And, and uh, in the nutshell, you could say that the roadmap looks like this. Now we are passing from labo to demo next year to semi-industrial system, and then uh, our scale-up pilot plan uh, will have uh, multiple modules. 
it means that in practice, in the size of the bus, in the floor space of the bus, we can make annually 2.5 million square meters of lithium anode and, and SSC material combination, which is pretty compact. Then about this, uh, this key material concept using cold up uh, the processing concept. So we have different uh, setups that we can, where we can utilize our technology. So this is our roadmap for these two, two different baseline concepts. Now, lithium looks very good. We have already processed uh, 1.0 for that, uh, which uh, gives good attention and high quality on different subjects. Uh, then we have been working on LCPS as the first material. We have already passed this uh, ionic conductivity uh, beyond 10 to minus 4 sieverts per centimeter. Actually, at the moment, the record is 0.7 times 10 to minus 3 sieverts per centimeter by uh, controlling stoichiometry density and adhesion. And the next target is that, that by working with different LPSX family of materials, uh, we can pass 10 to minus 4 sieverts per centimeter. Then, as mentioned by several earlier speakers, we also have to work on, 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 on surfaces between lithium and, and LPSX family of materials, and, and of course, also in other surfaces. And then this PLD capsulation technology is perhaps needed if after last production states, uh, the one who is integrating our component for the cathode side is not able to manage the environment so that that, that LPSX family is, of materials is not uh, suffering from the environment. So, as mentioned, interface engineering will be a very important part of the, of the work. Uh, about this uh, uh, lithium metal, so at the moment we have the process to manufacture 1 to 20 micrometer lithium anode material. It has very Purity, high surface finish, excellent adhesion for many materials. And our target is that, that in our concept, we would uh, coat this layer uh, with the barrier or solid state electrolyte directly after lithium deposition with the same manufacturing platform. And uh, our target is that, that, uh, that uh, with this type of 10 module system, we can reach. Of ownership or production of metal anodes with euros per square meter. Uh, and, that, and then we have, of course, different, the more ambitious parts as well, also including LPSX material or barriers or encapsulation material. Then, about LPSX material, which is, uh, has a lot of benefits, but also some challenges. So one first challenge is that, that, that uh, target material quality is very important. Now it looks like many scattering targets are not well fit for PLD system. That's why we are now working in this area a lot. Uh, we have been producing uh, uh, layers from 100 nanometers to 10 micrometers. These are cross sections from uh, 10 token samples. And with these materials, we have reached already uh, 10 to minus 4 sievert per centimeter ionic conductivities at room temperature. One interesting thing is that uh, that, uh, that uh, you can play with the uh, conductivity, which may also have some other like stability and, uh, and dendrite coefficients by applying in situ thermal, uh, thermal processing. Uh, this may this is a bit different what we have learned from, uh, from prior art and, and, and literature. Uh, typically, I think the optimum area for annealing is somewhere here. Now we are limited for this area, which is okay for us because we can already improve. And this work is now ongoing. And we talk about processing by different ways. Another important thing related for the LPS materials, it's also caused us a lot of problems in the R&D phase, making samples, making process development post that, that, uh, that, uh, that uh, ion conductivity is lower, even in cloud box environment, than to uh, less than 2 ppm moisture level in one hour. 
And if in, in honey flowers, you actually get the heart from the original uh, after deposition. So we have to think about how we manage this, uh, not just in R&D and lab scale, but also in the, in the industrial system. Encapsulation of this one thing, and then of course we have to think about this processing environment as well. We are also working now with LHO and Lipon. We are not yet fully happy with the quality of these materials. We can make it, uh, we have good adhesion, but we have to work on the on the density, stoichiometric control, and also the, the crystallinity impact, especially in case of LHO, where the performance is pretty much uh, uh, crystallinity dependent. Uh, to summarize at the moment, uh, positive, uh, as part of the program, consortium uh, have been developing ultra thin lithium anodes from 1 to 20 micrometer, good adhesion, uh, also tested in LISA program and some, uh, some other uh, LGPS, like we can work with thicknesses up to 10 micrometer, uh, good adhesion. Uh, we have already reasonable good uh, ionic conductivity at room temperature. Uh, post processing is, 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 is a possibility. We can improve perhaps stability and also the, uh, the, uh, the cell KPIs using some post processing tricks. Uh, and uh, we have pre assumption that we will do some type of uh, interfacial engineering between lithium metal and this LPS X family of materials to improve stability. And we had different concepts in mind using PLD and perhaps some other techniques as well. Uh, important thing that we have to also think of systems is the uh, handling of, of the material layers of the depositions. And, uh, and as mentioned earlier, we have a uh, uh, different LPS X family of materials in development with their own pros and cons. So generally, we think that we have scalable technology for all to roll or seed to seed process. And, and uh, we can offer for that uh, very accurate processing technology based on PLD and some complementary technologies. So thank you. I wonder what these guys are laughing. This would be a serious, real serious work. If you want to talk more, just contact me or Ville and we are happy to help you. Thank you. Thanks, Yari. I particularly enjoyed your slides on the scale up of the technologies. Ultimately, this is the goal of industrial R&D, so it's good to see it in action. Our final speaker for today is Sebastian Desolani from Svolt, where he's the head of engineering in Europe. His professional work has co covered solid state and lithium sulfur battery development. And today he'll be providing us an overview of the latest developments and capabilities of Svolt. Thank you. Can you see my screen now? Yep. Okay. Um, I apologize for the noise. My neighbors have decided that it was the best day probably to uh, start renovation work on their side, but I'll go through the slides anyway. Uh, so just a presentation about who are we as Volt. So we started as a small battery pack uh, project team in 2012 as part of uh, big OEMs in China, uh, Great Wall Motors. Then in 2016, we established our battery business unit um, and we started our first investment in uh, minerals in 2017. Then we um, established s -Volt in February, 2018. So we span out of Great Wall Motors and we are completely independent company of Great Wall Motors. Um, 
we have uh, our first Gigafactory inauguration launch, which was in November 2019, with first sales delivered to customer in December 2019. We announced uh, the German plant in 2020, in November 2020, and we had our uh, big battery days in December 2020. So Svolt uh, is investing 8 billion euros worldwide with 200 gigawatt hours targeted by the end of 2025. And we manufacture uh, cell, module and pack. We have uh, five R&D centers uh, which are targeted uh, by the end of uh, 2021 and uh, above 10,000 employees by uh, 2025. With these 200 gigawatt hours, we have six to eight plants which are targeted. One of it will be in Europe, in Germany, and I will show uh, on further slides where it's located. And uh, Zvolt is also a very innovative company, and we have uh, on the market, we're the first on the market bringing uh, cobalt free alternative to NMC uh, material. We also have uh, our uh, standard development uh, lines, which include all the NCM and LFP chemistry. Um, so I said we are very innovative and we invest a lot in R&D. So actually uh, over 1600 people work directly in R&D at Svolt, which is above 50% of the staff. We currently have two R&D center operating in China and we'll have uh, five worldwide with one in Europe targeted. And we filed above 500 patents in uh, 2019. So we're highly focused on R&D and, uh, and we have a significant output uh, out of our R&D activities. So this also include the solid states that I will be showing a bit later. Uh, we're compliant to the EU standards and all the automotive standards. So we use conflict-free uh, minerals um, and we have direct investment in mining. We have a good traceability of our raw materials from the mine to the final manufacturing. Uh, we do some uh, regular checkups uh, and visits uh, on our um, raw material uh, uh, provider. And uh, we have some collaboration for recycling the materials after the end of life. We also comply with all labor laws, uh, both in Europe and in China and worldwide. So uh, the strategic focus is um, first on uh, the raw material with direct investment. So I said in Pilbara Mineral, we also have uh, an investment in Tianyuan New Energy for ore conversion. Uh, which enables us to manufacture our uh, lithium hydroxide material. Uh, so as Volt, primary focus is to sell uh, cell module and pack for electric vehicles. And uh, we have also uh, second use uh, business uh, where the, the old uh, packs are disassembled and uh, taken into second uh, life for energy storage, so off-grid and uh, auxiliary grid. And we're working uh, in partnership with other companies for downstream recycling uh, to reutilize the, the materials and the minerals uh, directly from our, um, our materials and closing the full loop. So what's our product? Uh, we manufacture uh, everything starting from a uh, chemistry level. So I mentioned we have uh, own development into cathode active material with our cobalt free cathode active materials. We make cells, all type of cells. So uh, uh, primary prismatic cells, but we have also a focus on cylindrical and power cells. We make uh, the modules, finally the pack, and also uh, the BMS. So we have the complete value chain, uh, which is covered. In addition, uh, we also have 
uh, uh, developed cloud-based system uh, with over 90,000 vehicles already monitored on the road, which enables us to uh, to develop uh, a service which can identify a thermal runaway warning, lithium plating before it happens. So the idea is to have um, a signal that is sent to the vehicle uh, before any uh, issue happens and the vehicle is then sent for servicing at the, at the OEM. Uh, we also have uh, out of this cloud the battery analysis report, so it's very difficult at the moment for, uh, for an OEM to know the residual um, value of a battery after the end of life. Whereas with this cloud-based system, we can identify uh, how much is the residual value because we know exactly uh, which, um, how the battery has been cycled and which is the exact state of health remaining uh, after the end of life. So it's very valuable for second life uh, solutions. So in terms of chemistry, uh, we have developed a uh, cobalt-free material and uh, which outperforms the um, 811 uh, kind of state-of-the-art material that, uh, that is being put on the market at the moment. Um, so when compared uh, with same anodes, uh, so the different cathode, so the cobalt-free and the 811, uh, we can see that uh, there is about 50% outperformance in, term, in terms of cycle life for the cobalt-free material. There is also outperformance in safety, so hot box test and uh, overcharge. Uh, nail penetration is also uh, um, better uh, with the cobalt-free material. In terms of cost, we're 5% higher than LFP, whereas NMC811 is about 10% higher. So there is about a 5% gap between uh, 811 and, uh, and the Cobalt Free. We're also higher in terms of uh, calendar life. The only drawback uh, of the Cobalt Free versus the 811 chemistry is uh, on the energy density. So the energy density is. Uh, is about uh, three to five percent less than uh, 811 chemistry. So we already have uh, the, the sample on the road. So in the vehicle, you can see here uh, the vehicle which is running with, uh, with the cobalt free uh, chemistry and uh, the mass production will be available in June, 2021. So the sales will be available uh, for uh, mass production in June 2021. Regarding solid state battery, so we started our solid state program uh, in 2016 and established the R&D center for solid state in June 2018. Uh, at the end of the year, so we have two developments for solid state. We uh, believe that there's a transition being made from a uh, fully liquid battery to full solid batteries with uh, what we call a hybrid uh, battery. So if you like kind of gel polymer electrolyte. Uh, so the first uh, SOP for this uh, type of cells is scheduled at the end of this year. Uh, with uh, only 100 megawatt hours of capability, principally for uh, customer uh, testing and, and so on. The energy density targeted is between 250 and 300 watt hours per kilogram, depending on the sales, and between 550 to 650 watt hours per liter. Then in uh, 2023, uh, so end of 2023, we aim at the uh, getting out the second uh, generation of semi-solid cells with uh, one gigawatt hour of capacity and an increased energy density of 300 to 350 watt hours per kilogram and 650 to 750 watt hours per liter. Um, 
this is uh, the increased energy is due to the implementation of silicon oxide uh, within uh, the hybrid cells. We also uh, aim to uh, improve the, the anode further by 2025 and replacing the silicon oxide material by pure silicon, so lithiated silicon, and increase the energy density further up to 400 watt hours per kilogram. Then we have a realistic target of uh, full solid state uh, cells, which are under development at S volt, but have uh, many challenges to be tackled, especially in terms of uh, processability and manufacturing. So we aim of having our uh, first um, cells available for all solid state batteries by the end of uh, 2030 with first a gigawatt hour of capacity targeted and uh, energy density around 450 to 500 watt hours per kilogram. So we have 80 patents on solid state batteries, uh, including 75 patents for the inventions. So if we look at our global footprint, uh, we're mainly located in Asia. So we have about uh, 180 uh, gigawatt hours targeted in Asia. So at the moment we have our uh, plants operating in Jintan um, with uh, 16 gigawatt hours uh, uh, already installed. And uh, after the end of the first uh, two phases, there will be around 40 gigawatt hours installed at, at Jintan. Then there will be uh, second and third uh, manufacturing plants in West and Central China. In Europe, uh, we're located, uh, the headquarters are located in Frankfurt and uh, the manufacturing plant uh, will be located in Saarland. So the uh, SOP for the module pack will be 2022, so second, uh, second semester of 2022. And for the cell factory, it will be second semester of 2023. We also have some, uh, some uh, sales activities in, uh, in, in the US, and we're also contemplating the possibility of installing um, a factory there. So this is how uh, our expansion looks like in Europe. Uh, we aim for 6 gigawatt hours by 2023, but we're flexible to moving it to uh, 12 gigawatt hours, depending on, uh, on customer demand. At the moment, it looks like uh, we will be more on the 12 gigawatt hours and 18 gigawatt hours um, range uh, because of uh, high customer demand. So the groundbreaking is uh, planned for this year. And the plant SOP, so for the sale, is a second quarter 2023. The headquarter will remain in Frankfurt, and uh, we are uh, looking at uh, having an RNG center also in Europe, so in Germany. So this is how uh, the plant will look like. Uh, so this is our cell plan. This is a green field located in, in Uberhern. So why we chose uh, Saarland? It's because it's a good uh, industrial and logistic hub in Germany. We also have a opportunity to acquire talents, which uh, with all these giga factories is very important. And there are excellent uh, infrastructures. We also partner with H -A -H -S -S -H -S, uh, for the building and industrialization of both factories. So our uh, cell factories and module factories. And the SHS uh, provides a turnkey solution uh, to S-Volt, which is also strongly supported by the local government. So our plants are highly automated, about 96% uh, for the cell factory and 85% for the module factory. Uh, also, the uh, reason we chose Germany is because we need to have 100% green energy. So we will be using 100% uh, green energy. 
this is the module plan. So it's a brown field, uh, existing field uh, at the moment. And uh, this is how it looks like at the moment and how it will uh, look like um, when it's completed. So production uh, second semester of next year. And there's about 30 kilometers distance between the module plant and the, and the cell plant. And thank you for uh, your attention. And hope uh, that was interesting to see all these uh, gigafactories uh, being built up in Europe. And that's a very interesting moment for Europe to uh, grow in terms of uh, how the battery business will develop. Thanks. Thanks, Sebastian. Uh, S-Fault certainly has some ambitious goals, and I particularly like the cobalt-free developments. Helping reduce reliance on this problematic mineral is a real big win for battery ethics. Now we can move into our second set of questions with some of our presenters. Uh, Alex, the first question to you is, is the lithium solid state electrolyte present in the polymer composite stable? This is a very good question, um, and there is no clear answer. It depends on the formulation. Um, what we see with the polymer at the moment with DC metal contact, we have some kind of passivation reaction, uh, which becomes stable afterwards. Um, and what we see by adding um, suitable components to the hybrid electrolyte, this passivation disappears. So we can tune uh, reduction stability versus lithium metal by the choice of materials. So let's say it's stable in the final state. Ah, great. Thank you. And to Yari, uh, Yari's with us, great. Uh, is it possible to manufacture the entire lithium metal and solid state electrolyte separator apart using the same piece of equipment? Uh, well, at the moment, we have been focusing on the, uh, on the, all the other parts than the cathode active materials. So, so uh, that is, in a way, the missing link for making entire battery. So we can make also on cathode different barriers if required, uh, but not the CIM itself. But in theory, that is possible. Great, thank you. And to Sebastian, is s already engaged with EU and North American OEMs? Yes, we have an engagement with uh, almost all OEMs you can think of in, uh, in EU. Um, I'm not able to talk uh, very much in detail uh, here, but uh, there's a good um, feedback on s capability. Great, thank you. I think we have enough time for another round of questions. So to Alex, uh, what additive manufacturing potentials for solid state batteries are there? And achieve a more flexible manufacturing system in the future? This is also a very good question. It's not easy to um, answer. I would say if comparing different technologies from solid state batteries, polymer based technologies have the best possibility to be applied for the additive manufacturing like 3D printing, etc. Um, maybe uh, it's also good to mention here that we are um, the next generation 3D printed solid, solid state battery also in development for um, inside the Astrobot project. So we are working on it. And what we see, there are chances, but there are also some um, challenges for sure. Um, I would say the best advantage for polymers is that you can solve it easily in uh, solvent. So you, you have a liquid uh, material which can be um, 3D manufactured very easily. Um, for ceramics, this might be a little bit more complicated, but still possible. And uh, we see for sure uh, a good uh, yeah, development um, direction for the additive manufacturing strategies um, for batteries. Hmm. So I think there are there will be in future some um, some players 
doing exactly the same. Just 3D printing. Hmm. Great, thank you. And to Yari, um, how, uh, why have you not been applying this uh, PDL technology to the cathode side so far? Mainly, question is that that uh, that uh, we see that uh, that uh, influencing, for example, cathode material crystallinity is is tricky, uh, and uh, and of course, partially that is because request and interest for the technology has been mainly coming from the lithium metal barrier and and solid state electrolyte side. So partially, this focus is customer driven impact from customer interests. Um, great, thank you. And to Sebastian, uh, when will the cobalt free chemistry be ready for commercialization? Uh, will it be offered to every customer? Yes, so it's ready uh, in June this year and it will be offered to every customer. Yeah. Okay, uh, I think that's all the time we have for questions today. But any questions that we've missed, we'll have answered in an email. So thank you for that. Um, so really to close the event, uh, I think today's given me a lot of confidence and seeing all these real challenges that are being fought against by RTOs, industry, academia, and really that these batteries are helping us try and build a better future. We're really reaching a critical juncture in terms of decarbonization. And one of the keys to trying to resolve this is mass electrification, which batteries help us remove a blocker. We have an exciting year ahead for Lisa Project, and I'd like to encourage everyone to visit lisaproject.eu and sign up to our newsletter, and also visit projects.blog, uh, projects.latap.org to see our other projects. I'd like to thank all of our speakers today, and thanks to all the behind the scenes staff today to make it possible. And most of all, thanks to all the attendees for taking some time out in the day to cover some interesting topics. Thank you.